Good morning boys and girls. Today we are going to be smoking some gammon. We're going to be turning it into a lovely bit of ham. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, I'm going to be using the Kamado Joe, Big Joe, um, for today's uh, cook. Um, I'm going to show you how to set the firebox, um, how to bring the Kamado Joe up to temperature, what wood chunks we're going to use, um, what temperature we're going to cook at, roughly how long we're going to cook at, um, because we cook to temperature, not time. So I'll give you a, a rough time that we're aiming for. Um, the gammon that we're going to be using is from my butchers in Cornwall, which is uh, Warren's Butchers. Um, it's a gorgeous bit of gammon. Uh, it's a saddleback cross. Um, I have cooked this before and turned it into ham before, uh, so I'll be doing the same recipe because it was absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I've run out of that now, hence why we're smoking some of this, and, and you'll see the size of the joint that, we, uh, that we're going to be smoking. All right, no funny remarks. Um, but first, let's head over to the Big Joe, and then I'll show you how we get set up. So what we've done here is we've loaded the uh, Big Joe firebox up with uh, some whole milk charcoal. Um, and what I'd like to do as well is um, <coughs> take some of the old charcoal um, from the previous burn and just add it on top. We don't want to waste charcoal. Um, and the smaller bits are a good way to get the fire going quicker. And they kind of act as a charcoal kindling. Um, so that's pretty much how I like to set up. As you can see, five box is almost full, but there's still plenty of space under here um, for oxygen. <coughs> um, so all we do with this, we're, we're going to do a nice low and slow cook. So we're going to pop a couple of these eco flares fire lighters in. They're, li they're little wooden wall fire lighters um, with some natural wax on them, uh, all natural uh, clean burn. Um, we like to pop them in on one side, so we get the fires started on one side, and then what we do is once that comes up the temperature, I normally cook the meat on the other side. Um, so all we do with these, <coughs> give a quick, and away we go. So we're gonna leave the lid open um, for about five, 10 minutes, just to make sure we've got the fire started. Um, and then what we do is we close the lid, get the vents open and start bringing it up to temperature. But in the meantime, while that's happening, we're, um, we're going to prepare the gammon. So, we have the beautiful joint of gammon that I was talking about earlier from Warren's Butchers. Um, and the first thing you want to do, just give it a quick, quick dry with some kitchen roll, just to make it easier to handle. Um, we're going to be adding some mustard onto there and some black pepper, so I'm going to dry away. Uh, any excess moisture as you can see this is a bit of a beast of a joint of gammon but this is going to be doing ham for many weeks it will freeze um, and friends and family really like it as well so um, don't give them a taste because they will always want some so the next thing we need to do is remove the rind um, because we just want to I'm going to put mustard onto the um, fat cap there uh, and some black pepper but um, if you have the rind it's, it's not going to give you a very nice texture um, and it's not really going to penetrate you're not going to get the the flavor of the uh, mustard and the pepper on the um, on the fat and the meat so that's what we're going to do is cut away the string <coughs> like so And it doesn't matter because we're going to tie this back up afterwards. So get that string off, and then I mean you can, you can ask your butcher to do this. Um, would probably be easier. My butcher didn't, so I'll be asking him why not. Um, yeah. Um, and all you want to do is just take a nice sharp knife and just get under that skin um, as, as close to the skin as you can, trying to leave. A nice bit of fat on there. Um, try not to make a bad job of it as I'm doing. Um, but it doesn't have to be too pretty, um, but you don't really want to cut as deep. You don't want to cut so the, the meat's showing, so um, just gently with the knife, just keep easing it along, just like so. And then you'll find. Um, once, once you get to the end, you can just let the knife do the work, just tips of the knife. I'm sure this is the boring part. 
people don't really want to see um, so I may well edit this out <coughs> but we'll see um, some of you may be interested so as you can see once you get a good handful of it it's easy to kind of just pull let the knife do the work just gently gently <coughs> leaving a nice little bit of fat on there not too much I know some people don't like um, the fat on the ham I'm not sure why because that's where the flavour is if you're going to be putting some smoke and some mustard and some pepper onto the top of the ham onto the fat then why would you want to pick that bit off um, but anyway so there we go almost done and this you dry it well dry it up um, dry behind it with some salt overnight give it another dry and then stick it in your oven you'll get a uh, you'll get some nice pork scratchings so there we go skin removed <coughs> and on to the next bit like I said it doesn't have to be perfect I mean this is far from perfect but you, as you can see there's still a nice little bit of fat on there and what we're going to do we're going to take some mustard it can be any mustard I'll let's use this uh, nice and easy squeezy mustard <coughs> and all we're going to do oh, let's coat that over the fat like so and this is just going to allow the um, the pepper because uh, we're going to put some crap black pepper on there so it's going to allow the pepper to stick to the fat um, and give us the uh, give us the flavour that we want <coughs> so that's it on the mustard and the pepper I've already got some um, <coughs> half cracked black pepper here I like to have a little bit of crunch um, on the pepper um, <coughs> And all we're going to do with this is sprinkle it liberally over the ham, like so. And as you can see, it sticks nicely to that mustard coating that we've just given it. <coughs> so be generous. If you like it nice and peppery, just give it a good coating. Go nuts. And just try and coat every bit of that fat and mustard coating that we've got on there like so <coughs> now <coughs> some people like to soak their gammon in milk or water or whatever to draw out the salt before cooking I, d I don't <coughs> I tend to th find um, most gammon nowadays um, isn't as salty as it probably was um, previously um, I did get one of these before and I did soak it um, and me and the missus quite like a, a nice bit of salt to ham um, I'm sure a lot of people do uh, and we found it wasn't salty enough um, so the last one I did didn't soak it um, and it was absolutely perfect so um, but like I said it can differ um, depending on butchers or a supermarket um, so it's always good to give one a go uh, if you don't like it then do the opposite of what you did before so there we go that's the gammon uh, ready to go in the smoke and so now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you um, how to get the Big Joe up to temperature uh, before putting the ham in. See you in a bit. So back over to the Big Joe and the fire lighters have done their bit. We've got a nice fire going in there. You can probably hear the crackle. Maybe not, but you, you, I can hear it. I don't know whether you'll be able to. So anyway, we're going to use some apple chunks for this. Don't want to go too mad. You want a nice smoky flavour. So we've got two small chunks there. What we're going to do is we're just going to nestle them in by the fire. On that, that's hot. And on that, and you want to you want to make sure they're under the divide and conquer where the um, where the deflector plates are going to sit, and you want to give them enough air underneath there so there's enough oxygen to get them going. Because uh, what we don't want you don't want them smouldering for too long, but that because that causes your dirty smoke. Um, your thick grey smoke um, and what we're looking for is a nice clean smoke so got the wood in there fire's going <clears throat> you can go to the deflector plates like so 
and then get the brakes on. Close the lid. And then I'll show you how we do the vents. So top vent just while we bring out the temperature so I like to swing it all the way open and the bottom vent we want all the way open as well um, and then we'll leave that for about 10 minutes and then we come back what we're looking for on here is uh, we want to get this we're going to cook it about 250 today um, so it's probably going to take about 15 20 minutes to come up to temperature get it dialed in uh, and then we like to leave it for about another 15 20 minutes just to make sure the temperature is dialed in make sure we've got no thick gray smoke coming out we want the smoke to come but you want you want to barely be able to see it so um we'll check back in 10 15 minutes so as you can see we're uh, we're coming up to temperature quite quickly now so we want to just squat it down a bit so what we're going to do is we're going to close down the uh, the big top vent and we're going to shut that down so about I don't know if you can see that um, it's not just on the, on the first on the second notch. So we're gonna close that down to there, and down here we want to close it. If we're doing a nice slow cook, um, so you don't need that open a lot at all. Um, literally about 10 mil, and um, we've got that open. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust it where needed, but we want to aim for that dial to hit around 250. Um, so yeah, I mean, just tiny adjustments. We're probably not going to adjust this bottom one now. We're going to adjust this top one. Um, there's a lot of smoke coming out at the minute, so that's why we try and equalise. Um, we try and we, we get it to temperature, then leave it to temperature until this smoke stops billowing out um, and you get a nice clean smoke that you can barely see. So um, yeah, stay tuned. You see that? You can just about see the smoke coming out of there so we're at just under 250 which is our target temperature barely see the smoke coming out so that's the stuff we want to see we don't want to see thick grey smoke we want to just see wafts and waves of they call it thin blue smoke um, but you can barely see it so now's the time to put the gammon in so <coughs> what we've done is we've just tied it back up um, just to keep its shape. <clears throat> and we're going to stick it the opposite side of the fire. So you can normally use a drip pan underneath. I don't normally bother. I just flip the deflector plates over on the next cook. Um, plus, I don't have any at the minute. <clears throat> um, so there we go. <clears throat> That's going to smoke away. I'd imagine this is going to take about four maybe five hours because it's quite a big joint um, but we don't cook to time we cook to temperature so I like to take my ham off about 62 63 degrees which is about 145 Fahrenheit um, and what we're going to do to measure this I'm going to use my fireboard um, <coughs> thermometer so just so we can keep an eye on the temperature um, without having to keep opening it up and probing the meat so we're just going to stick that through the top and into the middle like so and we'll be able to keep an eye on the temperature and come back when we're getting close so we can start probing it with an instant read thermometer so that's it down with the lid and like i said that's going to sit at around 250 and um, so we'll check back once we're done so just a quick update, um, we're only about half an hour in, uh, but as you can see the temperature hasn't moved on there. Um, and when you look here, you can't see any smoke coming out. <coughs> um, doesn't mean it's not smoking, just means it's a nice clean burn in there. Um, I know a lot of people when they're kind of new to smoking, and I know I did, um, if I didn't see any smoke, um, then I'd chuck more wood in. Um, and I wasn't happy until I see lots of smoke coming out of there, but that's, uh, that's not what you want to do. Um, I mean, certain cuts of meat, I mean, things like brisket and stuff, you can uh, you can probably stick, you know, six, seven chunks of wood in there um, and give it a really strong smoke flavour. Other meats, um, chicken, lamb, 
Um, even ham, I mean ham could take a bit more smoke than chicken and lamb, but you don't want to see lots of smoke coming out. You're still going to get the flavour from that wood, um, but there's, there is smoke, um, it, it's just barely visible, uh, and that's what you're looking for. So, we have been going for about four and a half hours now. Um, as you can see, the temperature gauge hasn't moved from where we left it this morning. Um, the, the top vent hasn't moved from where we left it this morning. And the bottom vent hasn't moved from where we left it this morning. So, just shows you how efficient um, and easy to use the Komodo Joes are. Because, um, like I said, this has been going four and a half hours with the ham in. So, it's been lit for five and a half hours. Um, we've been dialed in at that temperature for five hours now. Um, and if you could smell this, I've got to say, gammon is uh, probably one of the best smells to be coming out that top vent. But let's open it up and take a look. And there we go. It's looking pretty damn good. So the reading we've got on the um, on the fireboard says it's about 145 Fahrenheit, which is about uh, 62 degrees, which is um, my target temperature. Um, but we also always going to check the temperature of one of these, which is a thermopen. It's an instant read thermometer. Uh, thermopen are actually running a um, good campaign at the minute, uh, which is uh, Barbecue Brave, trying to encourage people to cook to temperature rather than time, um, just to improve uh, barbecue in general. Um, it's a great campaign, and like I said, thermopen, uh, one of the uh, one of the first things that I bought to go to the barbecue because they really do ensure that your food's cooked perfectly. So um, what we're going to do, we've obviously got the uh, thermometer that's been in there throughout the whole cook, but it may be in a it may be in a spot that's um, cooked um, before um, other spots on the ham is cooked. So we're just going to check it with uh, the thermal pens. So just go in there to about the middle, and as you can see there, 63 degrees. Um, have a little poke there. Right in the middle, and I mean that's that's perfect. That's exactly where I like to take my ham off. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get this off. Just give it one last little check in there. There you go. We're at 66, 65. So yeah, absolutely perfect. We're gonna take this off now, and we're gonna let let it rest for half an hour, um, and then we're gonna slice in and give it a good taste. So um, check back when we uh, when we get to taste it. So we've taken the ham off, um, and I just want to show you, um, so we've been going five hours, just want to show you how efficient this uh, Komodo Joe is, uh, so we can see how much charcoal is left after five hours of a constant 250 temp, so we're just going to take the brakes off, take out the heat deflectors, welder's gloves, recommend them for anybody that has one of these, um, pop out the deflector plate. Like so. And as you can see, five hours in, and um, still got a lot of charcoal left in there. Um, and that, like I said, that's been running about 250 for five hours. So what we're going to do with that is close the lid, close the top vent, close the bottom vent, and that will effectively snuff out the oxygen, get into your coals. Eventually, this will go down to zero. And next time you use a Komodo Joe, just give it a shake, get rid of the ash, and you can reuse those coals. So, um, yeah, that's um, how I set up the Komodo Joe for a nice slow cook. Um, just looking forward to tucking into this gammon now, so um, check back for that cheeky little uh, snippet soon. So, the moment of truth, I'm sure the moment that you've all been waiting for, is to slice into this baby, so let's give it a slice. It smells immense, juicy, oh yes. Seriously, you can smell this, guys. Oh boy. Ooh. 
and uh, no uh, cooking video would be complete without the taste test so last but not least we're gonna give this beautiful bit of ham and look at that gonna give that a taste Oh. oh yeah, just enough smoke, nice little crunch on the black pepper, really juicy, I mean, ridiculous. That is an absolute winner, I can see me eating a lot more of this over the next um, day, two days, weeks. Um, so yeah, oh one last bit, oh. so I hope you've, um, you've enjoyed this video, uh, I do plan on doing more, um, it'd be, I'd appreciate um, any thoughts from you, any uh, comments, uh, any feedback, anything you'd like to see, um, anything you didn't like, um, that you wish I could, could improve on. Um, like I said, this is uh, the first of hopefully many videos that I intend to do on how to use my different grills, how to cook different uh, dishes and whatnot. So um, yeah, give us a like, give us a comment. I look forward to your feedback and uh, we'll see you again soon. See you later.